This is a little caddis pattern that I call the Tasty Carrot. It's on a size 14 heavy wire nymph hook with a copper bead. Okay, let's take that out. Just thread this copper bead on the hook here. Small eye over the point of the hook. On a bead they've got a fat side and a little skinny side. The skinny side goes on the hook point first facing the eye when you bring it around. So the fat side is meant to clear the barb and the bend of the hook. Alright, so for thread you can use any kind of light colored thread you want, but I'm going to use insect green. It's just an undertone. Not really going to be visible, but um, I'll explain it a little bit more here in a minute. So I'm going to start my thread up near the bead, come down halfway, trim away my waist. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is grab just a little bit of super glue and touch those thread wraps. Don't need much. And I'm going to grab a little bit of lead wire or lead free wire. This is 15 thousandths. And just wind on from about half the hook shank till you get up behind the bead. Okay, once you touch the bead, pinch your fingernail against it and wiggle it off. And then just curl that baby back under there. And that super glue will hold that and your whole body isn't going to go turning on you. Alright. So you got your lead on. I'm just going to build a small little ramp behind the lead there so that I can jump my lead up on. Just softish medium tension, do some crossing wraps through there and secure that on there. Okay, a couple more turns back. Next thing that's going to go on is a little bit of Antron off a card here. This one's a rusty orange color, and I've just I've about halved what comes in the original width of the rope there. You can see that. Once it's flared out, I've, I've taken about a third or about a half of it out, so it's not so thick. Okay, I'm not really too worried about the length at this point. I'm going to do a pinch and loop on top. And lifting slightly as I go. Walk my thread back to the end of the hook shank. Good. Trim it so that it's going to stop right behind the lead wire wraps there. You can wait till the end or just trim it now. This is just a short little, maybe 3 sixteenths of an inch shuck on there. Okay, next thing to go on is a little bit of copper wire. This is a medium size, standard copper. Use whatever you have. Okay, tying it right at the end of the tail, or the start of the tail I should say. And then the hook, I'm sorry, the wire ends right with the back of that lead there. So I'm obviously just building up a, a little ramp to that lead so that there's no jump up to it. See how it's starting to taper up to it now? And that way you're evening out the lead there and there's not a big jump to get over with your thread. Okay, now I'm going to use some orange colored scud back material. You could use clear as well, but I'm going to use orange this time. This is an eighth of an inch wide. And eighth of an inch you can get away without trimming into a point, but I'm going to do it just for demonstration purposes. See how I've trimmed a little kind of triangle. It's hard with the curve. I've trimmed it right on a little bend there. So you can see a little triangle there that I've trimmed at the tip, and that just helps catch it on. There, I've got that tip caught on. Now I can slightly stretch and walk it back. What I'm being careful of is that I want it to stay right on top of the hook shank. 
okay so that when it folds over it's right on top and then stop look underneath right where you want your tail to start at the end of the hook shank there and come up with some cleanup wraps okay all right now we can grab our dubbing I've got this little Antron dubbing blend box and I'm going to use this orange color right here called uh, Ginger Variant is what they're calling this one. It's just a light orange color and I'm going to put it on nice and thin here. build up about a four inch rope. Okay, shorten up my thread, come back here to the back, get that started, and make a nice little kind of tapering chunky caddis body here. Good. So that's all there is to that. <clears throat> Next thing I'm gonna do is grab some peacock. You can either use peacock curl, I'm gonna use the dubbing, it's a little stronger. Life cycle, and this is the peacock blend. Uh, just take out a small pinch. When you're learning to dub, less is more. Add more if you have to, but if you put too big of a chunk on, it's just a mess. So little bits at a time till you get the hang of it. Okay, I'm gonna walk back up to the eye, back down. This is where I'm saying you can add more. Better to add more than have too much. Especially when it comes to synthetic dubbings because you can't just tear those away. You have to chop them off kind of like a chenille. And that's never as easy. So I'm coating the thread again, just enough to make it back up to the front. And how do I feel about that? That's okay. I am going to make it just a little bit thicker. So I'm going to take one more pass down and back. Just so that it represents a thorax so I can pick a couple legs out as well. So here's my third application. Just come back. There we go. Now I got a little bit more bulk on it. Okay. So Try not to crowd the bead too much. Time to bring over the scud back. Right over the top there. Slight stretch in it. And tie it off with two turns. And one firm turn in front right behind the bead. You can see I've actually broke my thread there because I made my a little bit too firm but no problem since it's tucked in behind the bead there it's pinched and nothing went loose that's gonna happen when you're tying especially because I'm not used to this thread this is kind of like a this is a Vivas I believe it's like a 13 knot it's a it's thinner than your average thread so I'm gonna go ahead and just cross over that couple wraps my little waist tags and I'm back in business if I want I can make a couple more catches on back to make sure that that scud doesn't pull out the, the shell back material and one back in front again okay I'm gonna leave, leave a little bit there just in case I happen to pull that out I've, I can still reuse it without having to redo the whole fly so that's why I've left that small tag okay now situating this Scud back material so it's right on top. Start winding up the wire. Ribbing material so it's making ribs. It's also holding back the, uh, holding down the scud back, I should say, and giving segmentation to the bug. Once you get up to the bead. Tie off.
holding my thread tight the whole time. Okay, now I'm gonna just stretch this slightly and trim that off nice and close. Okay, you can either use, let's see, I don't have a black one, but I have a dark olive marker here, permanent marker. I'm gonna darken up the thread just for a few inches right here. So the reason I went ahead and tried this, uh, this little kind of insect green, caddis green color thread is because this uh, dubbing that we used when it gets wet is, it starts to get a little bit see-through. So why not have the undertone be a little bit green like the insect anyway? This is kind of represented almost like a dead caddis or an, or an October caddis when they start to get a little bit of an orange tint to them. So that's why I, I just left this color thread in the bobbin. I'm going to try it a little bit. Sometimes I'll just do white and darken it, but hey, why not use insect green? It's light enough. It's not going to overpower the dubbing material when it gets wet. Okay. Last but not least, one more small pinch of dubbing just to make a little collar and clean up our... And right before you finish is when you want to start your whip finish. So tuck my thread right in there and one, two, three. That way I'm kind of whipping in the dubbing a little bit. That way the thread's less visible. Nice and tight. Pinch, make sure I'm behind the bead there. Okay, trim away. Okay, so I've got that little caddis with plenty of ribbing on there. And then I'm going to just pick out just a little bit of that peacock dubbing. Make a couple legs. Add some life to this insect. Anything's too long, you can trim it off. And if you want to, you can add a little bit of. I wouldn't recommend using a thick head cement on this one, but if you have a runny one, go ahead and just set it right up on top there. It'll soak in to those thread wraps and help seal that knot that you made. Alright, let's change my lighting here, give you a different look. There we go. So there it is, the Tasty Carrot. Like I said, if things are a little bit too long, you can pinch them out or cut them off. But I'm kind of happy with the way it's going there. Thanks for watching.